Ray Quintero knows all about walking. I'd say 10, 15 miles a day. And that's, uh, I'm not shortchanging myself either. Oh, this is the shortcut. As head of nursing for Emory's neurological ICUs, he must travel to at least three different units to check on his patients. Hey, Julie. And I'm very mobile, and, and I need to be around the staff and around the patients. So no changes, or is it improving? No changes, improving. It is a far from ideal situation, but right now, it's the reality. Space for neurocritical patients is at a premium. Our problem is we've, out, we've outgrown our hospital. Outgrown the space and outpace the design. As medical science and neuroscience has advanced dramatically, the physical environment, the place, has not changed at all. Doctors and care workers must work in rooms barely large enough to hold vital equipment, and crucial procedures like CAT scans require long trips through the hospital. Right now, the CAT scan machine currently at Emory is on the opposite side of the hospital. It couldn't be farther away than where it is right now. I think people can relate about waiting for elevators. <laughs> Sometimes you have to wait for several minutes before you get an elevator. Uh, think about this, waiting for two or three elevators at two or three locations, going through different hallways and in different locations of the hospital. Think about that route and how long it would take and how sometimes frustrating it is for someone who's not having any trouble and then place a critical patient in your hands. And neurocritical patients often make this journey three or more times a day. It's stressful for them and a huge drain on the staff. It's sort of like a flotilla of small ships. A large bed with five caregivers often walking down the hallway, um, moving the patient. This takes people off the unit. Uh, it's very inefficient. Craig Zimring is working with us to change all that. He's helping to create a new, revolutionary neuro ICU from the ground up. We spent time with nurses, with family members, uh, with others to try and understand what they needed and what they wanted. The result is a design filled with creativity and innovation. This is an initial mock-up of the patient room that allows us to, to test how it works. It'll have a very wide doorway that allows beds and other equipment to be moved in quickly. One of the very useful features about the ICU is that a nurse can, can be here, can see directly into the, to the patient room, can do charting and observation without bothering the patient or the, the family member. The new design also includes equipment for common procedures like CAT scans inside the neuro ICU. To have a CAT scan uh, in the intensive care unit where the patient is either not transported or transported a few feet rather than to another floor and another zip code of the hospital is a huge asset that I think will improve patient care as well as patient and family satisfaction immensely. And as advances continue in the care of neurocritical patients, having facilities that match the quality of the care we deliver is important. I can't say to that referring doctor or that referring family, we're building a new hospital in five or six or seven years. Can you wait that long? Because she'll be dead in 24 hours. That's the reason, because we can't wait. But our new ICU is going to be more than a showpiece. With plans taking shape for a new Emory University Hospital, this design is an opportunity to try new ideas, evaluate patient outcomes, and use that experience to create a whole new kind of hospital. We hope to apply the same rigorous scientific methods for studying medical disease to now apply this to, start, to, to designing healthcare design. Then think of taking it from this model of taking it to an entire clinic and hospital with millions of square feet and right from the beginning very few people have that opportunity for right now though focus is on this unit its value to our hospital and to our patients i think excited is an understatement i personally think that this will be my biggest contribution to medicine uh, that i'll make in my life